Hello, welcome back to Emperor's Path. My name is SBJ, and today we're going to be talking about my top five favourite Steam Locos. So, if you've been following me on Instagram, one of the questions that gets asked quite a lot is what Steam Locos am I thinking of buying next, or why are there no Steam Locos on Emperor's Path? Um, which is a very valid question because my whole life I've been obsessed with Steam Locos, and only within the last sort of couple of years have I really been diesel orientated. So we're going to cover Steam Locos, we're going to uh, roll the intro. And now we're going to talk about Steam Locos. So let's start at number five. Okay, so let's drop in at number five. So number five I feel might be a little bit of a cop out and it may uh, trigger some people. So a massive apology if you do get triggered by this. Uh, it is a genuine, honest thing that I'm saying, so bear with me. If you've followed the channel, the Instagram, and things like that for quite some time, you all know that my greatest Steam love is the 14XX um, Great Western um, tank engine, which is an 042 tank engine. Um, it is portrayed as Oliver in the Thompson Tank Engine series, for a reference if you don't know. Um, this is my favourite locomotive. This is... This is my favourite locomotive. The reason it's a bit of a cop-out is because I already have one. However, whilst trying to sort out putting a DCC socket in it to make it actually run on my DCC layout, because it's such a small, tightly packed loco, they me never put DCC sockets in it, it broke. And the chassis split apart. And I'm absolutely gutted because this was the first loco that my wife ever bought for me back in 2003. 13 I think it was um, and it's my favorite loco um, I don't have the heart to purchase the spares that I need for it so um, I've got some being viewed on eBay for what I need but I I'm holding off so there's two things I either want a new version that's DCC ready to come out or I need to fix my old one um, I would probably run this on my layout way more if I could. Um, since I upgraded to DCC, I've always had problems trying to fit DCC decoders to it. Whenever I hardwired them, they were always really stuttery. And then when I tried redoing it this time, I split the chassis, which uh, I've been told is Mazak Rock, Maz, Maztec, Aztec, Maztec Rock, Rock. Basically, it's it screwed, so I need to buy a new chassis. Um, there's also parts that have just sort of broken over the years that need fixing. So yeah, that is something that needs fixing, but I love it. I love it in the Great Western Green, but I also love it in the BR Black, the BR Green. I, I think it comes in beautiful colours. I just wish there was a newer version of it, a newly tooled version of it would make me really happy. But we can't always get what we want. So let's move on to number four. Okay. Number four, uh, this may come as a shock to people, this may be absolutely understandable from people, but having seen bad reviews of this logo is why I've never purchased it, but I love the look of the logo. Um, so it is the Backman 3MT tank engine. Um, I like this because it sort of looks like a prairie, but it's got like a slightly different look to it. Now back in 2005, six, five or six, I did actually purchase one of these brand new from Hatton's and they were cheap. They were, I want to say 50 pounds is pushing how much it was. This is back when Backman, um, when Hatton's were selling bargain loco packs where you could buy like uh, six van wagons for 30 pounds. Like this, I feel like I'm really old by saying this and it was only 15 years ago. Um, 15 years ago? It, it, was, it was a time ago. Um, I really love this loco. Um, I think it's one of those locos that, to me, looks the part. And uh, it was the first loco I ever actually liked in BR Black. Um, I would purchase these if I hadn't seen such terrible reviews of it. Um, so that's something that, if anybody's had good luck, or has had a good Batman 3MT, let me know, because I'm really interested, because I think there's a beautiful little tank engine. I don't really have much more to say on it other than the fact of that I think it looks great and that's why it's at the number four spot. So with that let's move on to number three. Okay this is the first loco that has sort of like a real life 
essence to it as to why I really want it. So number three is the Hornby Terrier. Uh, now I know that you can get these cheap as chips uh, in certain areas, but the problem that I find is that some of them are DCC ready, some of them are not, and that's something that I need to address. As I've already previously stated with the 14XX, um, I think I want to get a DCC ready one simply so that I don't have to deal with the hassle. So why Hornby Terrier and what particular one? So first of all, it has to be Leadenhall, Leadenhall, Leaden, Leaden, Le Leadenhall, Leadenhallen. Yes. Um, the reason for that is because it is actually uh, a confirmed engine that used to run on the South Sea East branch line. If you followed the channel for a while and you're not new, you will know that I modelled the South Sea East branch line on a small little run on my layout. Um, and these are beautiful little locos uh, portrayed as Stepney in the Thomas the Tank series, but they're also very famous. There's a lot of these running on the Bluebell Railway uh, just down the coast, down in... Is it just I'm just going to call it Sussex. I can't remember if it's East Sussex, West Sussex, but Sussex at the Bluebell Railway. Um, I really love the look of these and the fact that they used to run in the area and this particular one I know because there's a photo of it uh, used to run in the area and runs on that particular line that I'm sort of modelling and have a background towards. Um, these are tiny little locos in comparison to sort of all the diesels that run on my layout but I think they look great and the colour scheme it's one of those logos until I saw that it was something that ran on the railway. It never really hit anything with me. It was like, ah, that's a, that's a nice little loco. It's a nice little 060 tank. Yeah, it's good. And then, of course, I found out that it ran on the South Sea East branch line. Immediately, my senses changed and said that I had to have it. Um, and it's something that I do look at from time to time. There's a lot of second-hand models of it. There's a lot of brand new models of it. And one day, I probably will purchase one. Um, but at the moment, it's not not first on my list of the ones that I need to buy. So let's go on to number two. So number two is probably going to come as no shock to anybody who knows that I have a great love of the Great Western Railway. Uh, and if you know me well enough, you'll know that also I'm not a big fan of the bigger engines and I'm very much a tank engine person. So coming onto the scene at number two is the Great Western Pannier Tank. Now, hands up. I genuinely, I'd probably have to really look into it, but I don't know the difference between a 56XX and a 64XX. I, uh, I'm not that interested in it as to where, which one's which. I'm really bad at it. It's probably for the same reason that I really struggled to find the difference between a 4SEP and a 4BEP and a 4SIG and a 4VEP. And a, honestly, it's a minefield. But I like the look of them. That's that's I like the shape of them, not necessarily what little extra bits they have or haven't got on them. However, I'm going to say Great Western Pannier Tank, uh, the Backman version. Now, I have two of the Hornby Railroad versions, which are great models. They do the job. They run slow enough that you can shunt with them and things. Um, however, I love the finite details and the slight shape change that you get when you go from the Railroad version to the... Uh, real version the more lifelike version of it and it's very much the same reason as to why I love the class 08 going into the diesel stuff see managed to sneak diesels in here now the I've always loved these and I think they are great little engines once again inspired by Thomas the Tank Engine because that's where all harrows back to now I recently worked on Ollie from Wardle Road's uh, Backman Pannier Tank and it was a beautiful model. It was so beautiful. Um, I found weathering, weathering BR Black Locos really, really difficult because it doesn't show all the stuff that you want it to show. So, um, but I, I did really enjoy working on his model and seeing it in the flesh was fantastic. Um, his was hardwired uh, DCC, so I couldn't test it on my rolling road. I couldn't test it on my rolling road uh, like I usually would when I'm weathering. What I do is I basically, before and after I weather, I put it on the rolling road to make sure and check how it runs so that I'm making it so that it runs the same as when I started. But I couldn't do that with his, so I took it up to the loft and put it on the layout. 
uh, and had a little play with it on the rolling road because it was at the same time where I wasn't able to run trains so it was put it on the layout. I tell you what, it was a beautiful, he had sound fitted, stay alive and all that sort of stuff in there and it was gorgeous. It was a gorgeous little engine and I'm not a massive fan of sound. I tried it, it was a little bit too loud for me. Having sound was just, I found the volume was a little bit too high and maybe down the road with with my desk set up later after Christmas, I'll be able to adjust that. Um, but however, his Pannier Tank one was like perfect sound. It wasn't too loud. It was enough that I could hear it, but I didn't necessarily, it didn't overpower the rest of the loft. I could still think whilst it was going on, which is half the problem I had with like my class 37 D TTS sound chip that I had. It was so loud. It drowned out the rest of, and I used to have, 50s, 47s, 37 running all around at the same time. It was just ridiculously loud. I just couldn't handle it. So having Ollie's one where it was quite mellow, I think that's a nice way of saying it because you could still hear everything, but at the same time, um, yeah, a beautiful little model to run. It made me very jealous. It made me warm one. So down the line, number two on the list is Pannier Tank, as I say, 57xx and 64xx i can't tell you the difference i'm sure somebody's going to comment below and tell me what that is by all means please do um i like the look of it and i, I think it's a great little logo and very much would be happy with br green br black or um gwr i'm saying this and actually instantly in my head i said actually i'd quite like it in br black like weathering it would be a pig but I love the look of the pannier in the BR black with the maroon coaches. I think that's a really nice look. So that brings us down to number one. So let's go have a look at number one. So here we are. We've made it to the end of the list. This is a short list. I mean, let's be honest, it's only five of them. And I think the steam locos, I find it quite easy to pick. Like my top five is not difficult to pick because of the ones I like. I'm not somebody who likes the big locos. Um, but I, th I, I think this is the... I'm gonna say this one and you're gonna say it's not really a big loco, but it's big enough that it's got a tender and that makes it a big loco in my eyes. So let's put a little bit of background to this one because it's made the number one spot and I wanna make sure that you're aware as to why I like this one. So first of all, uh, this particular class of loco, once again, until I saw it in the flesh, was not fussed about it. Didn't really even know it existed. Um, I saw it in the flesh and it has a lot of good memories for me based on the fact that it was the loco, the first locomotive that I rode behind as a dad. As I'm thinking of this, I think Hornby are the ones who make the schools class, specifically Cheltenham. Cheltenham um, and it is arguably a really small tender engine so I'm really pushing the boat with going from a, all the small tank engines to the big engine but it is a 440 tender engine um, yeah I think as a southern boy there probably should be more southern locos on this list but they're just not that I mean arguably the terrier is a southern loco so I guess um, but yeah, this is, this is currently my number one hunt on the list. And what's really gutting is I was on the wrong side of payday when this turned up at the model shop in Portsmouth. And when I had money to go and get it, it had then gone. So yeah, that sucked. Um, as I say, I'm not a big, like, I like steam, but it's not my favorite. It's not what I obsess over. Um, but I wouldn't mind having one of these on the layout. Um, it's a big enough loco that pulling uh, a three to eight coach rake wouldn't be a terrible thing to see. Um, five coaches is my general general amount of coaches being pulled by some sort of locomotive. Um, it's a big enough loco that it wouldn't look out of place. Um, what's kind of sad about this is that at the moment it's now currently not running on the Watercrest line. Its boiler ticket is up uh, and they need to work out what they're doing with it. Um, I'd love to see this back in 
back in circulation. I think it's a beautiful looking loco. It's very different and it's definitely unlike the locos that I usually like. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't say much more other than the fact that I'm, I really like this loco and it's always shocked me. And when I was, whilst picking out my favorite top five steam locos was quite easy. Actually putting them into order was really difficult. Um, and of all of them, this was the one that just kept popping into my head as that's the one I'd really like to see soon. So who knows, maybe in the future you will see one of these running on the layout. I'd love to put more Steam Locos on the layout. The problem is, is that I don't have DCC ready Steam Locos and I find that with diesels, when you hardwire a decoder or put a decoder socket in there, they respond a lot better. Whereas with the Steam Locos, I really struggle with them and I find that they misbehave big time. So that's something that needs addressing further down the line. So there you have it. That's my top five steam locomotives. I hope for those of you who are steam aficionados, this has been fun. I'm sure there's a lot of people who are angry at maybe some of the things that I have put on this list. Uh, I did want to add a few honorable mentions of things that um, probably could have made the list, but I, they, they didn't. Um, so one of the big ones is uh, the Black Five. I do like the Black Five. Um, I have a Hornby Henry, which is basically a black five so it's just not not appeared for me i'm afraid um i do also like the sort of the hall and castle class and those sort of big gwr locos where but once again i don't love them enough that i'd go out and have to purchase them but the ones that have made the list have so let's just quickly cover that again so we've got the hornby 14xx we've got the backman 3mt we've got the hornby lin lin Lynn Hall Terrier, uh, and we have got the Backman Pannier class locomotive, and then finally wrapping it up, we have got the Hornby Schools class locomotive. Now, I'm not precious about the names and numbers, but if I had to pick two, it'd be the Leiden Hall and the Cheltenham ones. As I said, they are particularly ones that have hit my heart in particular ways. The other ones, I wouldn't be fussed about the uh, numbers or uh, liveries that appeared on those. I'd I'd accept pretty much any of them, and if I don't like it, I can repaint. Ah, I'm saying that, and I don't want to do lining, so no, I won't repaint them. So yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Please let me know your top five steam locomotives down below. Coming up in the future, you're going to see a, you guessed it, top five diesel locomotive list uh, coming forward. And if I get enough, enough people asking for it, I'll do a top five of all time, what, I, what I'm looking for. Uh, to come to the layout next um so yeah thank you very much for watching this video if you enjoy what i do you can click the subscribe button down below uh, subscribing is free it's easy and it keeps you up to date with any of my videos that come out in the future if you really enjoy what i do and you want to support me in a way that costs as little as one cup of coffee a month you can support me on ko-fi or coffee however you want to pronounce it which is in the links down below uh and you can do a one month or a um, a rolling subscription on that one to support what it is I do. Uh, I, I support my, I'm extremely grateful for my coffee supporters at the moment. Um, if you do sign up to become a coffee supporter, even if it's only for one month, you will get a piece of graffiti added to the layout when it's time. So yeah, but thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, if you like what I do, you can watch some of the weathering videos that are up here. Uh, likewise, there's lots of playlists available for you if you so wish. So thanks very much. My name's SBJ. Bye.